Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are doing our daily devotional or take 15 with God. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming on back. Um, we are working on 15 Minutes Alone with God by Emily Barnes. And basically all I do is read the scripture that she provides and then read the the entry that she has here and give you any thoughts for action, any prayers or anything like that. And I'm going to be kind of switching it up, doing a little something different here and there. I just want to get through as much of this as I can for you guys, um, since I already started. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Today's reading is titled, Know the Bent of Your Child. And the scripture is Proverbs 22. 22 1 through 16 and the key verse is verse 6 so i'm going to go ahead and read that for you guys i am reading out of my niv study bible and it reads <clears throat> as follows i'm gonna take a sip of my coffee <clears throat> excuse me all right and it reads a good name is more desirable than great riches to be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. Humility and fear of the Lord bring wealth, honor, and life. In the paths of the wicked lie thorns and snares but he who guards his soul stays far from them. Train a child in the way he should go, and, he, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. The rich rule over the poor, but the borrower, borrower is servant to the lender. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. A generous man will help will himself be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Drive out the mocker, and out go strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. He who loves a pure heart, and whose speech is gracious, will have the king for his friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the, word, the words of the unfaithful. The sluggard says, there is a lion outside, or I will be murdered in the streets. The mouth of an adulteress is a deep, pit, a deep pit. He who is under the Lord's wrath will fall into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far from him. He who, who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and he who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty. So that is Proverbs 22, 1 through 16. And the key verse is 6, which is train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. And I'm going to go ahead and read what she has here. And if you hear my son in the background, he's awake. I tried to do this before he woke up, but he woke up early today, of course. <laughs> so as I think about about our children brad and jenny and look into the various shades of colors of color in the eyes of our grandchildren christine chad bevan and bradley joe the second i see six unique people how am i ever going to understand the uniqueness of each of these children i know that i have to attempt to understand each of them if I am going to have an impact upon molding a healthy, godly character in their lives. At the heart of each child is a cry. Please take time to know me. I am different from anyone else. My sensitivity, my likes, dislikes, tenderness of heart are different from my, bro my brothers and sisters. In raising our own children, we saw so many differences between Jenny and Brad. Even as adults, they are still different. I, in God's wisdom, had to realize that my approach to motivating them had to be styled differently for each of them. 
Children want to be trained in a personal and tailor-made way. In our key verse for today, we first see the word train. In the Hebrew, this word originally referred to the palate, the root of the mouth, the roof of the mouth, and to the gums. In Bible times, the midwife would stick her fingers into a sweet substance and place her fingers into the new child's mouth, creating a sucking desire in the child. The child would then, would then be delicately given to the mother, where, whereby the child would start nursing. This was the earliest form of training. The child mentioned in this text can fall between a newborn and a person that is of marrying age. The second part of this verse is, when he is old, he will not turn from it. At first, I thought this meant an older person who, is, who had become wayward, yet finally returned to the Lord. Little did I know that this word old meant bearded or chin. Solomon is talking about a young man who begins to grow a beard when he approaches maturity. For some, it might be in junior high school, and for others, it might be a college. The concept is that we as parents are charged to continue training our children as long as they are under our care. Note that we are to train a child in his way, not our way, our plan, or our idea. It's important to see that the verse is not a guarantee to parents that raising a child in God's way means he will return back again when he is old. I honestly don't believe that it is the proper principle for us as parents. When we train our children according to his way, the child's way, we approach each child different. We don't compare them one to another. Each child is uniquely made. When I became a student of my two children, I began to design different approaches for each child. Jenny was not Brad, and Brad certainly wasn't Jenny. Each child has his or own bent, his or his or her own bent, and is already established when God places them in our family. God has given you a unique child. Get to know him or her. I had to take a minute there. My son came over here. So it's funny because this is something my husband and I have discussed before <clears throat> and um, it just came in our disciplining our children because he kind of has a blanket approach for it and um, I understand and I this is something that I've prayed to God about to give me wisdom and kind of give me insight on each of my children although I live with them and I know them um, you know there's just certain things that you you need some guidance with, with them. And I've taken the time and I've learned each of their mannerisms and their desires and their, um, the way that they think and the way that they feel and the way that they process things. And, you know, he kind of has a blanket approach like it, you know, if I, if we ground one of them this way, then they all get grounded like that. But it doesn't affect everybody the same way. Like one of our children is very sensitive and you literally just have to tell her, you know, hey, you shouldn't do that. And she won't, you know, it's just that simple. But we have another one who has to test those boundaries and see, hey, maybe even though they say no, you know, maybe I can still get away with it. Or if we, you know, take our, take phones away from, one of them, the other one could care less. And, you know, so we, we have to think about our children individually, as opposed to those are our kids. And this is what we're going to do with each one of them, because it's just not going to work. The same approach isn't going to work. Um, I was a single mom for a long time. And I, at the time I had three children and all three, I mean, all six of our children here at home. Um, we have 13 all together. The six that we have left here at home, I can really see it. They're all so different. And it's like, okay, I see the three that I raised in my household, you know, when, when I was a single mom and they're so different. I'm like, how were you raised in the same house <laughs> with the same, you know, same values, same discipline, same interaction. And you're so different. You know, I have one child, my oldest son here at home is very, I don't know how to explain it. He is an introvert for sure. Um, I do believe that there's some other thing, underlying things that play into the way that he 
interacts with people, but he's very shy until he gets to know you, then he's more open. But even still, he has a cap on how long he can, um, he can be around other people. And he's just not, he's just not, you know, um, what's it called? He, I don't know how to explain him, but he just, he, he is, he's an introvert for sure. My youngest daughter is a social butterfly. She wants to be gone all the time. She wants to make new friends everywhere that she goes. She, you know, she's all over the place. She's got a little bit of ADD. So she, that kind of plays into that. And then my middle daughter, um, she just kind of laid back, kind of go with the flow more. She's more like me in that aspect. You should just go with the flow and, you know, but she's also very sensitive and she's also very emotional, which she did not get from me. <laughs> um, but she's very emotional. So she's the one that I can just tell her, I mean, I can't believe you did that. And she's just like, oh my God, I don't know, you know. So each, and then, you know, we have our two middle girls. They're 18 and 17. And um, one's just social butterfly as well. Very loud, very interactive. She's always wants to be out doing things with her friends, always on the phone. Um, but she's sensitive. She just doesn't want to show it. So you have to approach her differently. Then we have one, the other, our 17 year old, she's very temperamental. So you have to kind of approach her differently and kind of be careful with how you approach her. My youngest one here at home, we're still trying to figure out he's three, but he is definitely his father's son. <laughs> he is a mini version of my husband right now, but then I can see myself in him as well. So, it, you know, we can't, we can't go to each child the same way because they're just not going to respond the same way. And it's not going to have the same effect on each of them. So it's something that, and then, like I said, I prayed that God give me insight on each of my children so I can interact with them, excuse me, <clears throat> a little differently. Um, my husband just wants to say, this is how it should be, you know, and um, I have to say, okay, this is how it's going to be, but this is how we're going to get there, you know, and my husband has more of a, this is how it's going to be, figure it out, you know, um, very male, you know, <laughs> so definitely praying that God gives you wisdom and insight on each of your children so that you know how to approach them, you know how to help them be who God has ordained them to be, you know, um, and just making sure that you're nurturing those parts of them that need nurturing. And, you know, each of my children don't need the same attention, like the same type of attention. They need the same amount of attention. Everybody wants, you know, one-on-one -on -one time and it becomes a little harder when you have more kids. But, you know, we have to learn how to approach each of our children. They do have feelings and we have to make sure that we take that into account. I think sometimes... We disregard our children's emotions and feelings because they're, they're kids, you know, what, what do you have to worry about? But, you know, when you're a teenager, everything is the end of the world. So we have to help them understand that everything isn't the end of the world and how they feel now isn't, shouldn't dictate how they respond to things because they're emotional beings. They're, they don't know how to compartmentalize. They don't know how to express themselves as well as they should just yet. And that's what we're here for. And it doesn't end when they're 18. You know, we have 30, 20 something year olds and, you know, they're always calling, asking for advice and help and, oh my gosh, dad. And, you know, so I, I, it doesn't end at 18. I really do not like that philosophy of when you're 18, it's time for you to go. It That just does not set well with me because they're 18. They're legally adults, but they've never been adults before. So now we have to teach them how to be adults. And I have 30 seconds left. I'm going to say this prayer and do the thoughts for actions. And then I'm done. Um, Father God, you know how much I want to know the bent of my children. Give me the godly wisdom to understand who they are and to be an encouragement to them. Help me to build them up to be all that you designed them to be. Amen. Thoughts for action. Write down in your journal the ways your children are different. Take into thought 
how you will train them based on these differences. Learn one new thing about each, each of your children today. Do something with that information and praise your child today for being uniquely made. The additional scripture reading is Psalm 139, 13 through 16. That is it for today, guys. I believe that I missed putting in the stuff in my description box for the last couple devotionals. It's been kind of crazy. So I'm going to do my best to um, get that done today and get today's stuff in there and the last couple ones. That is it for today. If you need prayer, be sure to leave that in the comments or send me an email or contact me on Instagram. All my information will be in the description box. Till next time, guys, be blessed and be the reason someone smiles. Bye.